Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the motion to transfer $5.4 million from the Consolidated Fund to treat with some of the issues that we have to contend with in the wake of Tropical Storm Brett. But Mr. Speaker, before I speak on the motion, I crave your indulgence and that of members in the House this morning to express condolences to a number of families in Denry North who have suffered the loss of loved ones in recent times. The family of Bulut, the family of Tokman, the family, family of a very personal and dear friend, Mr. Speaker, Nikki of Belmont, the family of Stared, the family of Caius um, from Austin Hill, the family of Anthony, and of course, Miss Mildrina in Grand Ravine, who has had to deal with some deaths in her family. And there's so many other families, Mr. Speaker, um, and the names do not all come to me at this point in time. But I really want to express my condolences to those families and the collective condolences of the entire constituency of Denry North to the families that are grieving. Mr. Speaker, it is also opportune for me to express congratulations to the constituency council of Denry North and the Carnival Committee for pulling off a very successful 2023 Valley Carnival. Mr. Speaker, they did that against the odds. They were put to the sword, Mr. Speaker. They were attacked on social media, Mr. Speaker. And there were some forces at play that did everything conceivable to try and derail the efforts of the Carnival Committee and by extension, the Constituency Council. But at the end, Mr. Speaker, they prevailed, and I think they all should take a bow for having staged a very successful Valley Carnival. Mr. Speaker, moving forward, moving forward, it is my sincere hope that all of the acrimony, the discord, and the disagreements that preceded Valley Carnival can be ironed out, and that next year, Mr. Speaker, all the stakeholders, irrespective of their political affiliation, can come together for this one activity and portray our community in the light that it is meant to be portrayed. So notwithstanding the fact that the Carnival Committee was able to pull it off, I believe Valley Carnival can be stronger and even better when all stakeholders, irrespective of their differences, can come together and to make it happen. And this is what I'm hoping will, Mr. Speaker, um, characterize Valley Carnival or Valley Mass 2024. Mr. Speaker, I also want to place on the record um, or to congratulate the newly installed, newly appointed Chief Education Officer who's here in the chamber with us, Ms. Beverly Diodoni, Mr. Speaker. Hers is a very serious task. And, and given the motion that is before the House, Mr. Speaker, I thought it was necessary to have senior management personnel of the Ministry of Education in the chamber to absorb the debate and to have a greater appreciation for what the Prime Minister is doing this morning by allocating monies um, to help us meet some of the challenges we have in schools. Mr. Speaker, I must place on the record my sincerest expressions of congratulations to Senator Angelina Ferropoulos of Denry North, Mr. Speaker, on the attainment of her doctorate. Dr. Polius' achievement should serve as an inspiration for all young people of Denry North, Mr. Speaker. That irrespective of what your circumstances would have been growing up, if you have the determination to succeed, Mr. Speaker, you can scale some heights in academia that at times can appear to be insurmountable. And so today, notwithstanding that she is a political adversary, Mr. Speaker, I want to place on the record my congratulations to her. And as I said, I'm hoping that her achievement, her academic achievement, um, will serve as a source of inspiration for many young persons in the Valley who are aspiring to achieve the same. Mr. Speaker, that having been said, Mr. Speaker, um, I will remain very vigilant as the parliamentary rep and as the chief custodian of the Labour Party's interest in Denry North. Mr. Speaker, on the 22nd of June this year, Tropical Storm Brett slammed into St. Lucia with maximum sustained winds of 65 miles an hour or 100 kilometers per hour. As has become customary, Mr. Speaker, with such weather events, 
it inflicted damage on key sectors of our economy. Agriculture was Delta Blue, health infrastructure was in impacted, and Mr. Speaker, significantly, a number of schools were damaged in the wake of Tropical Storm Brett. And Mr. Speaker, ours is a government that has placed a premium on education. And we believe that at every opportunity, we must give the children of St. Lucia the most comfortable of environments within which their learning must be facilitated. And it is against that backdrop, Mr. Speaker, that we are here this morning moving diligently to transfer monies from the consolidated funds to repair the schools that were damaged. Mr. Speaker, approximately 22 schools were impacted by Tropical Storm Brett. Namely, the Mogouj Combined School, the Vidbutai Primary School, the Ave Maria Primary School, Gordon and Walcott, formerly the Anglican School, Bexor Primary, Miku Primary, Chosel Secondary, Fort Saint Jacques Primary, Soufre ICDC and Library, Soufre Special Ed, Soufre Infant School, Soufre Secondary School. I think that's the one time the member for Soufre, Mr. Speaker, notwithstanding we are talking about damage in the aftermath of a, a tropical system, it is yielding a smile from the member for Soufre because she knows that her schools will be attended to. Moving on, Mr. Speaker, the Viewfort Primary School, the Bellevue Combined School, Debarra Combined School, Grosile Deke, Anger Combined, Denry Primary, T. Roche Combined, Blasha Combined, Viewfort Post Secondary, and the Bus Laguas Combined School. Those schools, Mr. Speaker, were amongst the most severely affected, and the bulk of the money that we will be receiving from the Ministry of Finance will go, Mr. Speaker, towards rehabilitation of school infrastructure um, uh, in the communities that I have mentioned. Mr. Speaker, we have more than 100 educational institutions that we must maintain on an annual basis. And in the estimates, you would have seen a little more than $3 million having been allocated for school rehabilitation in this country. Mr. Speaker, we've been able to manage that amount and use it very wisely to ensure that we treat the issues as they surface in schools. Mr. Speaker, we are under no illusion that $3 million is not ideal. But in the circumstances, we in education understand. We understand the situation that the country is in right now. We know things will get much better than, that, that, than they are right, um, having improved in recent times. And so, Mr. Speaker, I have at every opportunity implored the staff of the ministry to maximize the output from the amounts that we have been given. In the case of the Viewfort Primary School, Mr. Speaker, the damage was pretty extensive. And notwithstanding, I would have been given a report by the Permanent Secretary and the Deputy Permanent Secretary in the aftermath of the disaster. I made it my business, Mr. Speaker, to travel to Viewfort on a Sunday with my camera to be able to appreciate and see for myself the extent of the damage. And what we noticed, Mr. Speaker, it was not just the strength of the wind that created the damage, but that the beams, the metal beams, from a school that had been constructed, I think, sometime after, after Hurricane Allen, there was quite a bit of corrosion, uh, and that was undermined with winds of approximately 60 miles an hour. A compre uh, um, I always have permission from the member for Viewfort South, Mr. Speaker. I think we have a, a very cordial relationship um, that does not always manifest itself in the chamber, but it does elsewhere, and so I am under no pressure um, venturing into Viewfort. I don't know if I don't know if other members in here can say the same, Mr. Speaker. Um, but I, I always feel welcome in Viewfort. So, Mr. Speaker, that particular school was severely affected, the Viewfort Primary School. And, Mr. Speaker, we immediately dispatched our team to make the assessment. We have preliminary, preliminary amounts, Mr. Speaker, as it relates to the Viewfort Primary School, and the work to be done is pretty extensive. The one thing we have been able to do is to speak to some of the prospective contractors 
and to implore and impress upon them the need for them, Mr. Speaker, to work diligently. And if it means that in some cases they have to work night and day, they will have to because we do not want for there to be um, any disruption as it relates to the reopening of school. Mr. Speaker, the Bellevue Combined School in View Fort North was also damaged. They suffered roof damage, and this includes roof framing, covering, electricals, and the ceiling. And I did visit that school, as I did for Viewfort South, with this time the member for Viewfort North, Mr. Speaker. And in the presence of some of the staff, we were able to have preliminary conversations right there on site in terms of giving a commitment that the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance will find the monies in time um, for the rehabilitation of that school. And here we are today, Mr. Speaker, feeling vindicated that the Prime Minister, true to form, has found the money and this morning we are coming to the Parliament for approval to ensure that, that the repairs are carried out as we would have promised the people. Mr. Speaker, the Mogush Combined School was also badly damaged and I think I intimated that this morning to the member for um, Shuzel, who at every opportunity in the Ministry of Education, and I know it happens with other colleagues of mine on this side of the House, we have tried to, Mr. Speaker, engage and include the member for Shuzel in the discussion as we discharge our duties and our functions to the members of his constituency. So the, the Mogouj um, Primary School, Mr. Speaker, has been impacted and work will commence on that school in quick time. Other severely impacted institutions or schools would have been the Denry Primary, Mr. Speaker, damage to windows, um, and quite a few of those windows um, have to be replaced. And in these days, when you, you, you talk about school rehabilitation and even construction of new schools, Mr. Speaker, it is not acceptable for you to just take a plan as we knew one, lodge it with the DCA for approval. But the, the, the nomenclature has changed, and today we are talking about climate resilient infrastructure. So the repairs that we'll be embarking on, Mr. Speaker, would not be done in such a way where we just replace what was damaged. But we have to build back stronger and to ensure that whatever we put in there, Mr. Speaker, will be able to withstand um, whatever, whatever weather systems um, that come our way. But Mr. Speaker, this is part and parcel of the Ministry of Education preparing this country for the reopening of school in September. The physical infrastructure is important, but we are doing a lot more than just the customary rehabilitation of schools complemented by an additional two million to treat specifically with the damages inflicted by the tropical weather system. Mr. Speaker, as we speak, in excess of 4,000 laptops have been configured and they are ready to infiltrate the school system. Every child in Form 1, Mr. Speaker, as we speak today, has been guaranteed a device. That device has been programmed, it has been charged, and it is in safekeeping, hoping that when each Form 1 child in this country, irrespective of the educational district, irrespective of the parents' political affiliation, every single child will be issued a brand new laptop computer at orientation. And we have agreed, and we have agreed, Mr. Speaker, that no longer should we disrupt the term to have those ceremonies in the middle of September um, disrupting the programs of principals. But at orientation, we will make the devices available, and of course there will be symbolic ceremonies done um, not to disrupt the schools. Mr. Speaker, every single child in Form 1 will be the recipient of a $500 bursary compliments the government of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, every single child in this country, whether you form one or form five, this government has guaranteed $2.6 million to pay your facilities fees. Mr. Speaker, every child in the public school system in form five, right in mathematics and English CXCCSEC, Mr. Speaker, the government has committed monies to pay CXCCSEC. Mr. Speaker, every teacher in the public school system has received an increase, or will be receiving this month, an, this month, an increase in the materials allowance as was promised by this Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, we are upgrading schools. 
More than 150 more learners can now access early childhood education, Mr. Speaker, because we have established nine pre-K classes within select schools in communities around the country. And with the pre-K, Mr. Speaker, as the name suggests, pre-kindergarten, these are young children who are transitioning from early childhood centers into mainstream education. And we notice that there has been a significant drop in the national school population. And we find excess space at some schools. But Mr. Speaker, what we must also take into consideration is that in addition to the excess capacity you have at schools, we also pay close attention to the availability or lack of early childhood services in communities. So in communities where we have the space and we realize there is a deficit in terms of early childhood services, we move in quickly, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that we establish the pre-K program. And I was fortunate enough um, maybe two weeks ago to visit the setup in, in Mongouge in Chouzel, Mr. Speaker. And speaking with a technical officer telling how impressed I was with the setup, the height of the, the, the face basins, because of course you're dealing with three, four-year-olds, Mr. Speaker. I mean, the setup is just so inspiring. It is just so pleasant, Mr. Speaker, that the officer said to me, wait till you see what is happening in other parts of the country. So we are, Mr. Speaker, um, taking early childhood education very seriously. And only recently, the Prime Minister and I, in a very informal conversation, gave the commitment that more resources will be pumped into early childhood education um, in the coming months. Mr. Speaker, across the sector, the primary and secondary school levels, the government expends in excess of 2.2 million annually, as I said earlier, for facilities fees. And this is something that we should never shy away, Mr. Speaker, from drumming from echoing and for, 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 for repeating, if only for effect, Mr. Speaker, we must. Because the point has been made before that there are parents in this country. Lani Moon Apeisa, Mr. Speaker. Lewev Yotan Ron a machine Kavini. Yokadu si a machine passage ki la, or si sa se van peyan ki Kavini. Ek Adam Moon Lewton Ron sa, ek van na Kavini ek se van peyan. Ek an pen Kavan pou de dollar. L'année moun, qui nous voulait quoi, et bien nous pas voulait quoi, l'année moun qui passe à même acheter yon pe pour bailler échoudité. Et même ces moun ça, yo pas ni ça pour créer sustainable forms of employment pour adan yo. Yo pas ni l'argent parce que yo pas à travailler. Et vous ca dit moi après yo ca struggle de l'air pour acheter yon livre dit oui. Not with standing up, we've been able to provide assistance to quite a few and and, and the number of persons receiving social support from the government has a expanded exponentially, Mr. Speaker. The reality is that we still have people in our society who are struggling to make ends meet. And then you say to that individual who struggles to buy a pound of rice or a pound of sugar that you must find $100 or $150, in some cases $200, to pay facilities fees. It is against that backdrop that a government with a conscience can say that we are abolishing, Mr. Speaker, the facilities fees and the Minister of Finance can commit $2.6 million. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we've had problems with school security. And sometimes, Mr. Speaker, people react to the news when they notice their incidents where schools have been burglarized and, and, and things schools have been tampered with. Mr. Speaker, we find ourselves in a very indelicate position. Monies that otherwise we would have taken to augment and to improve pedagogy or, or, or the teaching learning process, some of those monies, Mr. Speaker, now have to be spent on the installation of cameras at school to help beef up security. So when you hear people looking to politicize crime and make it seem as if crime is a construct of this government, Mr. Speaker, we have to be very, very careful with that. Because at the end of the day, when the criminals come and they are having a field day, Mr. Speaker, everybody is adversely impacted. When they burglarize a school, I am certain in every school in this country, we have children who come from homes that support all the political parties of this country. So here's an opportunity for us once again, Mr. Speaker, to implore not just the members in this honorable house, but all patriots and responsible citizens of this country to speak in one voice in denouncing criminal activity. It pains me, Mr. Speaker, for the Ministry of Education to have to take $200,000, $300,000, $400,000 
that we could have used to do so much more in the school system. But instead, Mr. Speaker, we have to procure CCTV um, um, cameras and other security devices to provide security. But that having been said, that is not me in any way trying to diminish the importance of security. Of paramount importance to me as minister and the parliamentary secretary and this government and senior management personnel in the ministry is the safety and the security of the teachers, the students, and the ancillary staff in the education system. Mr. Speaker, we are going big on increasing access to higher education. This administration has promised to work towards having one university graduate in every household. And Mr. Speaker, we are keeping this promise. We have seen the scholarship offerings to our students increase significantly over the past two years. And we expect, Mr. Speaker, more students will access tertiary level education under the first generation and the UNIPAS initiative. The first generation, we've spoken about it here before, Mr. Speaker, where we are programming specifically for individuals who are coming from homes and families where we have never had a university graduate. It cannot be right and progressive in a country where some people can get by because they have the means and others who have the aptitude, who have the capabilities, they are stagnated because their economic, socio-economic circumstances do not allow them, Mr. Speaker, to move forward. We are bridging that gap. And last year, we enrolled 50 first-generation scholars at Monroe College, Mr. Speaker. And in the next few weeks, another, another cohort of 50 will also enroll to complement the 17 Monroe scholarships. But we have gone further, Mr. Speaker. We have listened to the cries of people studying online, particularly those enrolled um, with the open campus of the University of the West Indies. And the point was made, and the question has been asked. But if we are doing so much in partnership with Monroe, what about the University of the West Indies? And our government, Mr. Speaker, will not shy away. We will not shy away from telling this honorable house and by extension the people of this country and the region that we have a responsibility to the University of the West Indies. One of the best institutions in the world. And it's against that backdrop, Mr. Speaker. Against that backdrop. We had a cabinet conclusion written approximately a month and a half, two months ago, where persons who are enrolled with the University of the West Indies Open Campus, they can now apply for assistance, Mr. Speaker, with their programs, hoping that the government can meet them halfway and they can successfully complete. Mr. Speaker, we have an initiative that we just launched recently, UNIPAS, University package of assistance for student success. Mr. Speaker, we believe that for a small island developing state, we do not have bauxite, we do not have oil, we don't have mineral resources, Mr. Speaker. The quality of your human resource base, more than anything else, will determine whether we survive in a globally competitive environment whether we think or whether we lag behind countries of, of similar circumstances um, in the same space looking to improve the lot, the lot of their people. So, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education has received and continues to receive a sizable chunk of the national budget. Mr. Speaker, it was the Ministry of Education under the Labour Party administration that ushered in universal secondary education. And the member for Viewfort South, who was the Prime Minister at the time, and Justice Michel, Mr. Speaker, who was the Minister of Education at the time, when the conversation started on universal secondary education in this country, that was met with a lot of opposition by people who ought to have known better. Mr. Speaker, that was resisted, and it was being done at a time when in some parts of the world, they had moved so far ahead of us that the conversation at the national level was about universal university education. But here we were in St. Lucia arguing and debating and looking to oppose universal secondary education. Education has always been, Mr. Speaker, at the forefront of the programming of Labour Party governments, not just now, but in times past. Because we understand what education can do. 
We understand how we can cause somebody to improve their lot in life. We understand how we can take a child who is from humble circumstances, Mr. Speaker, and beginnings, and propel that child into positions of influence where their ability will be given expression, notwithstanding what they would have had to endure in their formative lives, Mr. Speaker. Et moi, je dis, Mr. Speaker, that la jeune nous a mis ici à Jodia, que le Premier ministre a pris pour 5 millions de dollars off budget là pour mettre un salaire qui est emergency fund pour ça faire travail en l'école qui était tapé dommagé par tropical storm bread ça c'est un bon bagaille et moi pas si bon tu seulement puis moi c'est ministre éducation et c'est bah ça qui fait fait en bas de ministre mais moi comme ministre speaker ça c'est yon coup encore qu'au premier ministre là et puis un gouvernement les bas qui a venu devant qui a moutché cette liste là nous qui mettre l'argent en, en, en affaire l'école, puisque nous avons pris l'éducation en maïs cette ici. Soyez, et nous savons, plus que n'importe autre bagaille qui est en pays, c'est l'éducation en maïs qui a déterminé, qui a été payé nous en tant qu'il a venu. Nous avons pris l'agence, M. Speaker, et acheter des chevaux, et que les gens qui ont nous conseillent que nous avons un cheval là. Moi, c'est là les gens ici qui ont dit que nous avons un cheval là pour marcher. Mais M. Speaker, nous ne pouvons pas faire ça. Nous avons pris l'agence avec l'autre bagaille. Mais nous avons pris l'agence, M. Speaker. Et là, nous avons un qui est mauvais. Et le Premier ministre de la that even que tous les jours, nous avons un livre de Chimé pour constituer un Chimé. Nous avons un livre de Chimé qui est pour parler de Chimé. Mais nous avons pris l'agence de n'importe côté. Mais oui, nous avons campagné sur le mantra de Poutine, People First. Et any gouvernement, ou any country, that spends and invests monies in the education of its children is a government and a country that is on the right path. And so, Mr. Speaker, with this very brief contribution, I lend my support unequivocally to the motion to transfer $5.4 million from the Consolidated Fund to the Contingency Fund to finance repairs to the schools that I just mentioned. Mr. Speaker, I believe the money will be well spent. The money will be well managed, and I have a very dedicated team of officers in the, the plant and equipment unit of the Ministry of Education, of course, being expertly guided by the Deputy Permanent Secretary. And I'm hoping that the enthusiasm of the new Chief Education Officer, when you, you, you take that, Mr. Speaker, and, 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 and you, you com it complements what obtains at the moment, it will make for a more effective Ministry of Education, it will make for more comfortable schools, and it will make for better learning environments for our children so that they can rise, irrespective of where in this country they are from, to realize their potential, Mr. Speaker. Get the education that they deserve, and when they get to an age where it is time for transitioning to higher education, we will find the scholarship opportunities for those who don't have the means, and hopefully, Mr. Speaker, upon graduation, they will take their rightful leadership places in this country, and we can sit back and feel vindicated that we made the right decisions at the right times for the advancement of our country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support the motion.